Hi everyone, welcome to the 2020 Kent County Youth Fair Leader Meeting. The purpose of this presentation is to acquaint everyone with the changes that are coming to the fair this year. We had several rule changes and additions to the fair book. I think the easiest way to cover these changes is to go through the fair book page by page to highlight the various changes. We have a digital copy of the fair book on the website. You will notice that the PDF is in a book format so that you can easily scroll through and search the fair book. You can also jump through to the page that you want. You can download and print the pages that you want. If you'd like a printed copy of the fair book, please contact the fair office. We will print one for you. We provide one printed copy for each club. Additional copies can be purchased at $3 per book. Contact the fair office by phone or email to order your books. Okay, on to the rule changes and additions. The rules, policies, and procedures have all been reorganized so that they are at the beginning of the book. Every rule under general exhibitor rules apply to each department. All exhibitors and their parents are required to read and follow the rules. We are back to one entry deadline date, June 15th. All entries will be online at fair entry. Complete entries must be paid in full by the last Friday in June. Unpaid entries will be deleted from the system and the exhibitor will be subject to the late entry policy, which I will go into under the policies and procedures portion. Another change is in the entry fees. All animal entries are now $5 per head or cage. One thing to take note of that seems to be overlooked each year is the requirement of barn duty for our exhibitors. We are a youth fair. Each exhibitor is required to volunteer a portion of their time in the departmental barn or building in which they are exhibiting. Barn duty serves as security for the buildings, but more importantly, the exhibitors are available to answer any questions that the visiting public may have about their project. Every animal will be health checked prior to being admitted into the barns or tents. This is very important. Sick animals will be sent home immediately. The superintendent reserves the right to refuse entry to any animals showing symptoms of a disease, condition, or parasitic infection. Also, any animals that begin to exhibit symptoms during the week of fair will be immediately sent home. We've had problems in recent years with improper animal identification. All animals must have the proper identification. In the event of missing market animal identification tags, an exhibitor must report the missing identification tags immediately to the superintendent for approved replacement identification. If an exhibitor and or family does not report this to the superintendent, the animal may be refused entry to the fair. If there is a discrepancy with identification tags, the exhibitor and or family has the right to give an explanation to the superintendent and the livestock committee to determine eligibility to participate that year. If the same exhibitor and or family has a discrepancy in future years, the animals will be sent home and not allowed to be shown. We've also had problems in recent years with exhibitors not taking proper care of their animals during the week of fair. Livestock exhibitors and their clubs are responsible for the removal of manure and bedding from the stalls and pens upon arrival to fair during the day and departure of animals and clean up their project area. The fair board has the right to issue a warning and then a $50 fine up to removal of individual and club exhibit if the animals are not properly cared for and their pens are not properly cleaned each day of the fair. This is a reminder that all market livestock exhibitors are required to participate in showmanship in order to sell their project animal. If there is an instance where an exhibitor is not able to compete in showmanship, the superintendent may grant an exemption. New this year is the opportunity for market exhibitors in some departments to complete an educational experience or a record book in order to sell. In the online entry, each exhibitor is required to enter the educational section of their department. If an additional educational experience is offered, it will be listed in this section. We strongly encourage each exhibitor to submit their own entries online. Exhibitors that do not submit their own entries are being denied the opportunity to learn the process themselves. The Kent County Youth Fair Board believes strongly in teaching youth the skills they need to succeed in their endeavors, and that begins with entering their own projects in the fair. As a leader, you may request updated reports of who has entered in your club and what they have entered so that you can send reminders. Select the department section class or subclass that corresponds with your project. Breeding stock need to be entered under the breeding class that corresponds with age and type of animal. 
breed classification may be adjusted at check-in if the animal does not follow breed standards it was entered under. The same is true for still exhibits. Classes can be adjusted at check-in if the project is in the wrong class. Exhibitors that do not submit their complete entries by June 15th may request permission to enter from the KCYF Board of Directors. Please refer to the late entry policy in the Board Policies and Procedures section. The King County Youth Fair Board of Directors implemented a late entry policy that goes into effect for the 2020 fair year. This policy became necessary as we have had a substantial increase in the number of exhibitors that missed the deadline and still want to show their projects. Entries are considered late if they are not received at fairentry.com by midnight on June 15th. For all exhibitors that miss the June 15th deadline, a late entry request must be submitted to the office by the second Wednesday of July. Late entry requests will be considered for approval by the KCYF Board of Directors at the July board meeting. Upon approval of by the board, exhibitors requesting late entry agree to a late fee of $100 for each exhibitor, doubled entry fees for each class that the exhibitor wishes to enter, forfeiture of their premiums, and entry payment is due within 24 hours of submission of their late entries. One thing to take note of, Entries that are submitted on time but not paid for by the last Friday in June will then be subject to the late entry policy. In order to keep the auction all on one day and to not go so late into the night, the livestock auction will now begin at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning. Please make sure your regular potential buyers are aware of this change. The order for the sale will be slightly different also. Sheep will now be after the goats in the small animal portion of the sale. The beef and the dairy departments will alternate their order, which means that this year the beef department will be before the dairy department in the sale order. Also, the buyer's dinner will look different. We will have a come and go snack tent with refreshments, snacks and sandwiches that buyers can grab and take back into the sale barn. The Royal Court is a group of exhibitors chosen to represent the Kent County Youth Fair for one full year. Court members participate in parades, public appearances, promotional events, community service projects, and other events throughout the year. We have three courts, the Senior Court, the Junior Court, and the Prince and Princess Court. Applications can be found on the website at kcyf.org, and they must be turned into the fair office in a sealed envelope by June 15th. Interviews will be held on July 17th in the King Building beginning at 5.30 p.m. New this year is a mandatory orientation and training day, which is on August 1st in the King Building for all court members. The KCYF Board has made an effort this past year to have each livestock department superintendent name an assistant. The assistant's job is to help with tasks in the department and take charge if needed. The Dairy Department's assistant superintendent is Holly Race. In order to alleviate congestion at the fair entrance on our opening day, all animals must be on the grounds by 6 p.m. on Sunday prior to fair. Weigh-in of market dairy animals will be at 7.30 p.m. on Sunday prior to the beginning of fair. Dan Everett is the Beef Department Assistant Superintendent. Market heifers are a new market class that exhibitors can enter this year. Additionally, the Beef Department has developed two alternatives to the record book requirement. Exhibitors may now complete the Beef Quality Assurance Certification or attend the annual Beef Educational Meeting instead of completing the market record book. If completing the BQA certification, exhibitors will be required to enter their certification number at entry. If attending the Beef Educational Meeting, exhibitors will be required to indicate at entry. The Beef Superintendent has a record of all those exhibitors that attended the educational meeting. Alexi Wolf is the assistant superintendent in the sheep department. Sheep check-in is Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 3 p.m. All market animals must have proper tag identification entered on fairentry.com. Entries without the proper scrapie ID will be rejected. At check-in, if the tag on the animal does not match the entry information, the animal will not be checked in. Please work with the superintendent and fair office to make sure your tag identification is correct. Weigh-in will be Sunday at 5 p.m. The sheep show has been changed to Tuesday at 4 p.m. Breeding stock and explorer animals may be brought in for the day of the show. Market sheep will now sell after the goats in the livestock auction. 
The SHEEP department has also added an additional educational opportunity. Youth may complete a superintendent approved educational event instead of the market record book. If you'd like to complete an educational event instead of the market record book, please talk with the SHEEP superintendent about your plans. The educational event must be completed by August 1st. The GOAT department also offers an alternative to the breeding stock record book. Exhibitors may complete the breeding GOAT record book or complete an educational poster or report. Market GOAT exhibitors must complete an expense notebook. All exhibitors must take part in the interview process on Sunday in the GOAT tent. The swine superintendent is Dale Lynn Thompson. The assistant superintendent is Mike Mager. Pigs must be tagged and entered on fair entry by June 15th. A full body picture of the pig with their KCYF ear tag visible must be uploaded at entry. Lost KCYF tags must be reported to the superintendent immediately so that the entry records can be updated. Animals that have tags that do not match their entry record will not be allowed to unload. Check-in for the swine department will be Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. and Saturday from 7 a.m. to noon. Friday check-in times will be assigned by the superintendent. Animals arriving after check-in time is over will not be allowed to unload unless the superintendent received prior notice of a late arrival. The swine show will be held on Monday beginning at 8 a.m. The new poultry assistant superintendent is Diane Bieneman. Poultry record books are due the last Friday in June to the fair office. The poultry show has been moved to Wednesday beginning at 9 a.m. Egg classes are due at 8.30 a.m. Due to the lack of pylorum antigen, pylorum testing has been suspended by MDARD for the 2020 fair year. The rabbit and KV assistant superintendent is Andrea Perez. Each exhibitor may now show up to five rabbits in breed judging. Explore showmanship and fun classes will be Thursday at 11 a.m. The horse department is run by the Kent County Horse Leaders. Please visit kentcountyhorseleaders.com for information on how to participate in the horse area. Please make note that every horse exhibitor is required to enter the Kent County Youth Fair in the Horse Education section, Horse Record Book. Additions to the department this year are the PEP program, Proud Equestrian program, and continuation of the mini horse show. Beth Lefelm is the assistant superintendent in the alpaca department. There are new dates and times for the alpaca shows. The obstacle course is Tuesday at 5 p.m., showmanship is Wednesday at 9 a.m., and costume class is Friday at 9 a.m. The dog department will again hold their obedience, rally, and showmanship classes on Friday before fair at Cedar Rock Sportsplex beginning at 10 a.m. The agility show will be held on the football field on Monday beginning at 4 p.m. Performing Arts will be our entertainment tent nightly event on Tuesday and Wednesday of fair week. Also, when signing up through fair entry, exhibitors will be asked to list the instrument being played and whether or not they need an accompanist. The still exhibit departments have very few changes this year. Please, for the benefit of the still exhibit coordinators and office staff, all exhibit tags must be visible during display in the booth. We often have to go back and check projects to make sure the correct award was given. It makes this task much easier if the exhibit tag is visible, so we don't have to go into the booth to search for a tag and project. Department 60, Youth Needlework, has the addition of a pieced quilt project. Department 64, Youth Fine Arts, has separated the Any Other Painting or Drawing class into two separate classes, Any Other Painting and Any Other Drawing. This will be our third year for holding a still exhibit auction. It has been increasing in popularity and our exhibitors make some amazing projects. The rules for entering the still exhibit auction are listed here. Please have your exhibitors consider taking part in the still exhibit auction. We have a new Facebook page for our livestock auction at KCYF Livestock Auction. Exhibitors have an opportunity to introduce themselves and their projects to everyone. Buyers are spotlighted and auction changes are highlighted. Don't forget about our Flat Out Fair promotion. Download Flat Patty from our website or pick up a Flat Patty from one of the locations listed on our Facebook page. Take pictures of Flat Patty and send them to us by any of the ways outlined here. You will then be entered into a weekly drawing for a $25 gift card to a local business. We've had quite an upheaval in our world with the COVID-19 virus and many people are left wondering, what does this virus mean for the Kent County Youth Fair? 
Let's start with what we do know, the role that 4-H will play in the Kent County Youth Fair. MSU Extension has modified, postponed, or canceled all in-person events until at least September 1st of 2020. So let's talk about what does this mean for your club? The Kent County Youth Fair is an open youth fair. We do not require participation in an organization for youth to show at our fair. All 4-H clubs are considered fair clubs by the Kent County Youth Fair Board of Directors. Some choose to have 4-H in their club name, some do not. All are welcome. For the 2020 year, clubs that choose to have 4-H in their name will need to drop the 4-H from all displays. What about equipment that our club or department purchased with 4-H funds? MSU Extension does not support the use of equipment that belongs to Michigan 4-H at in-person fair activities until after September 1, 2020. Can I volunteer with the fair? MSU Extension stated that MSU Extension staff and volunteers are not permitted to volunteer at in-person events. However, all leaders, exhibitors, and parents participating at the Kent County Youth Fair are considered KCYF volunteers, not 4-H volunteers. It is your choice to volunteer where you desire to donate your time and talents. Will the MSU Extension 4-H American Income Life Insurance Policy cover 4-H youth who are participating in an event or activity that is not sponsored by MSU Extension? No, coverage will still exist when they participate in MSU Extension events. However, in-person activities that occur before September 1st, 2020 will not be considered MSU Extension or 4-H events. This includes pre and post fair events such as group workouts, facility setup and cleanup, etc. But I need insurance coverage for my club kids and myself. The Kent County Youth Fair Board of Directors has an insurance plan that will cover your club events and volunteers. They also have the option to cover exhibitors. The Board of Directors will have more information on this subject in the near future. Can 4-H members join other county programs in order to participate in a fair if the fair is after September 1st? MSU Extension does not encourage it, but it is a local decision based on county 4-H and county fair rules. The Kent County Youth Fair is an open youth fair. All youth between the ages of 5 and 19 are welcome to participate. The Kent County Youth Fair does not require participation in an organization, nor does it require residents within Kent County. All youth are welcome. Will 4-H consider adding on a year for 4-H youth that would have aged out after 2020? No, the 4-H age policy will not change. MSU Extension is committed to creating virtual experiences that will ensure that young people aging out still have a great final year experience. For more information, contact your local 4-H program coordinator or Jake Dedecker and Jeff Dwyer at the emails listed below. The King County Youth Fair Board of Directors is developing a volunteer sign-up form for volunteers to enroll in coverage under their liability insurance. As a club leader, you would be asked to fill out the name of the club and any leaders or project leaders that you would like to have covered under the fair's liability insurance. We will have more information on this in the near future. This wraps up the information that is new for the 2020 Kent County Youth Fair. Thank you for being a leader and helping to provide a successful experience in agriculture for our youth. These are uncertain times right now and the Kent County Youth Fair is certain to look a little different this year. The Kent County Youth Fair Board of Directors continues to monitor the executive orders put in place by our governor and adapt to fit those orders. One thing is certain. The Kent County Youth Fair Board of Directors is committed to bringing our youth exhibitors the best possible fair year.